Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, so I made a little haul on eBay. I told you about it last week of some Vanda orchids. I'm kind of in a Vanda mood somehow. And what better orchid to withstand long transport and heat than the Vanda orchid? And I'm telling you, it is actually really suited for summer transports, as opposed to Oncidiums, for example. So here we have two pretty pretty big vanda orchids and the whole reason why i purchased them actually is because they are big they're verging on specimen uh, that one i think it already is a specimen so let's get closer see what they are talk a little bit about them and where i purchased them from okay so first off the display for them is a uh, Poor. This is because I ran out of pots. Actually, out of the big pots. But no worries, I will have some big pots pretty, pretty soon. Until then, though, I need to soak them every day, keep them here to drip, and then I put them on the wires. I made some places for them next to my window. Anyway, so the first one is a Rinko Centrum Lara Gold. And this is actually a beautiful yellowish orangish, actually more orange orchid. The pictures show it to be a little yellow. They were taking from this very same plant because it did have flower spikes. They just didn't last on transport. The transport was pretty long. It was 10 days. And this is because it got stuck for about five days in my country. So it spent the Friday, the weekend, Monday it arrived in my town and Tuesday I actually got it. Ugh. Such a nightmare when that happens. So five useless days in a deposit means no flowers. But you do have a picture. The flowers belong to this very same orchid. And as I was saying, if you search the name on Google, you will see, depending on the camera type, the flowers look a little bit more orange or a little bit more yellow. I think the color is just somewhere in between. In any case, it's that type of color that I love. Now, behold, look at this little monster. Let me just raise it up for you a little. That's a whole lot of roots. And here I have one, two, three, four, five fans. They're all cakeys. Vandas are not sympodial orchids. Usually Vandas don't produce many, many cakeys unless they are actually very mature. This orchid might be prone to creating cakeys or it might just be mature. It's a mixture of both. The reason why I purchased it I have to say I'm in a little bit of a specimen type of kind of mode right now. And this is because Orchid Garden in Poland recently started to have some activity on eBay and she has some auctions. And you might know already that I'm not okay with auctions, but I can understand the auction for these orchids. I'll elaborate more in a different video why auctions are not particularly okay and why you should be careful with them and why some are okay. Anyway, let's get back to the orchid. So the Lara Gold produces tiny flowers. I suspect they are the same size as my Rinkoridas Bangkok Sunset. They are orangish in color and some sources suggest that it is also fragrant, while other people suggest there isn't a lot of fragrance but having the experience with the Francis Fox and recently with the Saint Andre I don't really trust all that much sources you might come home late and not catch the fragrance of this orchid you might smell it way too early before the flowers get to elaborate their fragrance anyway if it is fragrant or not not sure it is still up for debate but because this orchid has so many mature fans it produces a lot of flower spikes so let's take a look at the orchid <laughs> the little monster some some of these fans don't look particularly spectacular. They've lost quite a few leaves from the axis, such as this one. But as long as it's not sick, and I don't think it's sick, it should be perfectly fine. It does not look appealing, yes, but you have all of these fans just covering it up. The roots, on the other hand, are pretty wild. And at this point, I'm not sure if a 15 centimeter pot would fit them. But lucky me, I'm getting some 17 centimeter pots, so hopefully that will be okay. So judging by the size of this orchid and the amount of kikis, she is pretty, pretty old. I would say it is already pretty much a specimen size, given this is not a big Vanda, it's a miniature Vanda. It resembles a lot the, ooh, what did I have, a Ritas? No, it was Rinko Stylus, the blue one, Celestis, the Celestis that I lost and I'm looking for it. It resembles that quite a lot because it is a hybrid between a Rinko Stylus and I think Ascocentrum. Two vendacious orchids, of course, but they're not as big and white 
and as space consuming as a proper Vanda orchid. So if you will, they are space savers. Uh, roots on the other hand, they will extend, they will grow pretty wild. That's not a bad thing actually and I intend to contain them in something. So pretty much this orchid will not take up a lot of space, it will not grow tall very very fast. But when it's gonna be in bloom, I think it will put on a spectacular show. Alrighty, so this was the Lara Gold. It is looking a little bit better now since it spent so much in transport. It was severely dehydrated when I got it. I let it soak for a lot, a lot of hours. I'm soaking it every day and the leaves return to normal. It was in worse condition than this. You can see some of the leaves are still not open fully. Alrighty, so let's look at the other one now. And this right here is a Vanda Denisoniana Cream Shine Torn. And this had a flower spike, which didn't last on transport, it was broken as well, but you can see the picture of the flower on the screen right now. It is the flower of this orchid. Now the reason why I purchased it, even though I had another Denisoniana, is because of that mix-up that Schwerter did. Initially I purchased my Denisoniana thinking it would be orange, but some people who purchased it said it was white. Schwerter didn't know exactly what they had, I don't know exactly what I have. My Denisoniana is recovering right now and this, this is a big one. There we go, rootwise, she's looking quite great. And I already know the flower on this one and I really like it. It is actually creamy in color, has quite a bit of yellow, it's not white, so at least for that it was worth me purchasing it. And of course it is big, it has already bloomed. Mine, I'm not sure if it's flowering size just yet, I bought it as a younger orchid. I really just wanted a mature Densoniana that I knew how it looked like. The other one, I'm not sure what it is. This one, yet again, was an auction. And yet again, I do understand why this was on an auction. At least in my region, it's a little bit hard to get mature Denisonianas and not to mention Sanderianas or Tesseladas even or things of the sorts with a decent price. They usually go up to 80 euros and more, which is something I'm not yet prepared to spend. So this was a good buy. I purchased it for 36 euros. The other one was 23. Uh, yeah, 23 or 24. So pretty decent prices for what they are and for my region. If in your region you find Denisonianas that are yay big, a lot cheaper than here, then yay, I envy you. But in my region, no. When you find a Sanderiana, mature, kind of youngish mature, not a seedling, it's a, it's a celebration and it's very expensive. Now when I purchased it, I didn't notice something very interesting about this orchid. Let's get you in a little closer. Do we see what's going on here at the base? we have two keikis. And this orchid is actually not prone to produce a lot of keikis anytime. Um, this means this orchid is pretty, pretty old. I would say mm, over 10 years old at this size. It's quite mature, it's already producing keikis, and this only means that I will eventually get more flowers. The bushier the Vanda is, the better. It's not gonna happen overnight. But I do have the opportunity to have a bushier Vanda. Speaking about which, I'll link you down below to a video from My Green Pets with a Pachara, very, very old Pachara. It's enormous, it has so many keikis, it's beyond specimen size, but it's wonderful, so it's really worth seeing. And as I was saying, I am in a bit of a specimen size mood right now. There are some advantages to specimen orchids or older orchids, which I will not get into in this video, but I do intend to make a discussion about that. Bottom line is that if you have a specimen orchids, obviously you have more growths, you have more flowers, you know that it's mature and it has the possibility to bloom if conditions are right. And if you happen to find it at a decent price, that's even better in my opinion. The downside is they do take up a lot of space. Good thing is if you have a window that has the possibility to keep some Vandas hanging, pretty much you're safe. However, I don't know if you can keep 100 Vandas specimen size in a house. So that's problematic. But right now I do have the space. It's a bit paradoxical because I just received the Vanda seedlings, which are the total opposite of these things. But yet another video arises from this. We're gonna talk about the seedlings, young plants and mature plants and the whole life of an orchid. I think it's gonna be interesting for those of you who are at the beginning of the hobby. So a lot of good topics arising from the recent Vanda hauls and the Vanda seedlings that I received. And I will link it down below to the eBay page of Orchid Garden. They sell only in Europe. They also have buy it nows, but they also have auctions. A good thing is that the orchids that go in the auction are already very big. Reason why I kind of understand the auction. 
you know, what price would you put on a specimen orchid or a very mature orchid? Many of them are already in bloom. The other standard nursery orchids are by nows, which is good. So I can understand that and it's really up to you to see if anything is worth it. So alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching this video. This is my new haul. I really hope they will bloom again this year. Problem with some species of Vandas, they only bloom once a year. But hey, this is supposed to be very fragrant, the Denisoniana, I didn't mention that, so maybe it's worth it. Alrighty, so thank you so much for watching. There will be quite a few videos on Vandas in the future and I know some of you are excited, so stay tuned for that. And you know the drill, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchids and plants videos. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye! So a little update on my caviar seed pod. It's still developing, it looks very interesting, but there's a downside to letting seed pods develop on orchids. New growth did not start just yet, and I'm afraid it's not gonna start anytime soon because the orchid is focusing on the seed pod. Reason why I'm so, so tempted right now to just remove it, because I don't really plan on trying to propagate this orchid. I'm not yet prepared for that. There are some things that I need to get and prepare and focus on, and it's just not the right time. So I might just go ahead and remove it, let the orchid focus on new growth, roots and all of those fun stuff that for me right now are a little bit more important.